Hello, welcome to this new video looking at decision trees and in particular a worked example. I'll put a link at the top of the screen for a video I have got which explains a bit more about what decision trees are. This is more to look at an example how to calculate it. As you can see from this image, decision trees can look really complicated. In fact, this looks like a keeled over nine leg spider. So what sense can we make of it? Well, we'll try and talk you through bit by bit to show you what sort of decision we can make from it and actually how to interpret that decision at the end. Now there's two things to note on our decision tree and really to do with the two shapes we have, the squares and the circle. Now the squares are decisions and you'll see in the example we do have we have got three squares, three decisions that we can make as we go through. Now these are very much in our control, we either take an option or we don't. There's no relying on any of the number or data, we can choose which way to go. Alternatively, if you look at the circles, these are what show us our probable outcomes. So these are more the roll of the dice. So we have no control over these. These are purely what could happen. So remember that the squares are where we can take control. The circles are very much down to chance, or at least probability, uh, as you'll see as we go through. Now I apologise in advance if you are watching this in black and white. I'd be very surprised if you are. Or if you have some issue with your colour vision and actually find interpretation of colour a bit more difficult. What I've tried to do as I've gone through this video is use colour to highlight some of the key features to help you to see what's actually happening. Now in order to ensure that we don't confuse the issue and purely look at this as a calculation, I've removed any labels such as open a new plant, release new product, relaunch, redevelop existing product, and actually focused on making this very much a quantitative technique. So anything that could be a decision or options I've reduced to literally letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G in this example. And you'll see those in yellow. Directly below them in brackets, well it's valid, are the costs of those options. You'll notice that F and C, for example, do not actually have any cost, hence it is zero. So they're free options that we could take. In blue, you'll then see the potential outcomes. These will always come after that circle, the outcome node. And there's a piece of text which defines what that might be, success or failure, and then the probability below that. And from any outcome node, you'll find any possible outcomes will add up to a probability of one. So you'll see from node A, for example, you have success 0.6, and then going down to the next decision square, 0.4. So it's a definitive outcome. Where you find there's only one possible outcome from a decision, you'll see there's no probability offered, the probability is actually one. So you'll see that on E, for example, which is across the middle, which has a cost of 0.1 million and an outcome is certain of receiving 2 million. Sometimes you might find in an exam or a test question, they give you one of the probabilities and if there's two options, you can then work out what the other one is by the difference from one of a certainty. I've not done that here. These are all certain outcomes uh, and I've given you all the different variations of that. In green text on the far right hand side, you then have the value of what that outcome would be. So right at the top, coming from node A, success there, 0.6 probability, is the equivalent of that would mean three million pounds. That's what that success would actually be. So 60% chance, if you like, of getting three million. Okay, well, there's a lot going on here. As I said, there's three decisions that we can actually see, so three squares, and that's really intimidating to look at. Now the best way for us to address that is to start by looking at those decisions, working from the right, backwards towards the left, back to the beginning of the root of that tree. The reason being for that first decision, we can't actually get to a quantitative outcome until we've worked out the other decisions and their values. So we're going to start by having a look at the outcomes from our decision on the top right here. I've put it in a square red box and actually to look at this separately to see what's happening here. And if we break it down this way, it makes it far more manageable activity to go through. Now again, I've used colour coding throughout and you'll see those figures and I'm going to add a few more things in there. Now if we look at D as one of the potential activities that we could do, there are two outcomes from it. Success, which have got 0.25 probability, and failure, 0.75 probability. Now success is worth £8 million, a failure would actually be a further loss of a million pounds before we even consider any costs. Now we need to work out the expected value, so that's the weighted value of those different outcomes. So step one, we need to calculate that expected value. You'll see I'll show it here in pink. Now we do that by multiplying the probability of each of the options, so for example success, 0.25, by what that value would be of success, which is 8 million. We then add up the values, then multiplying the probability and outcome for each of the options. We only have two here. 
Now it just so happens that failure in this instance has got a negative outcome. So failure would actually be a decrease in revenue of £1 million. So we're actually going to take that away. Usually you add together your options, but rather than negatives, we're going to take it away. So step one, respective value would be 0.25 times 8 million, minus, or plus a negative if you prefer, 0.75 probability of that negative 1 million pounds. Now adding those together, or taking away in this instance, gives you expected value of 1.25 million. Now what that means is, if we went through this decision a million times, on average we'd come out 25% of the time, so 0.25 of that success, 8 million, three quarters of the time, 0.75 probability of losing a million. So on average, that comes out at 1.25 million pounds. That's the expected value. So we'd actually be 1.25 million pounds revenue better off. Well, let's take away the cost of D, and the cost is actually 4 million pounds. So we're only going to be better off in terms of revenue by 1.25, but the cost is 4. So overall, you can see actually the net gain is actually net loss in this instance. 1.25 minus that 4 million, so the pink minus the yellow number, leaves us with a loss of 2.75 million. So that would be the net gain of that. So it's not really worth doing. Now we don't have to work out probability of taking activity E, as you can see here, because there's only one certain outcome. We're going to get 2 million pounds. And the cost of achieving that is 0.1 million, again in the yellow text. So step three, our net gain of E, if you like, is the 2 million revenue we're going to receive. Take away the 100,000 pounds cost, 0.1 million. So that's actually got a net gain of 1.9 million pounds. So base financial on those two options would better to go for E. It's actually net gain of 1.9 million as opposed to what is essentially a net loss of 2.75 million for going to D. So we've now calculated our first section. You'll see I've now transcribed those numbers across back to our main decision tree. Now the next thing we need to look at is our second decision lower down before we start moving back over towards the left. And we're going from the right first. And very much the same way we can break this down into a series of separate equations. So this time we're looking at F and G. I'm actually going to start at G because this is where we actually have some outcomes to calculate. Now G has two possible outcomes, a positive outcome and a negative outcome. They happen to have a split probability of happening. So 0.5 is a 50-50 chance. So a positive outcome would be 2.4 million pounds increase in revenue. A negative outcome would be a loss of half a million pounds. So again, is that the same calculation? Step one, the expected value, you have in pink here, is the probability of a positive outcome, 0.5, times what would be the positive outcome itself, 2.4 million. And we're going to take away again, so we've got a negative outcome, 0.5 times 0.5 million pounds. So probability 0.5 times that outcome. And that would give us an expected value. Again, if we play this infinitely, this would work an average of 0.5 million pounds expected value. So step two, we're 0.95 million pounds is going to be our revenue, if you like, on average. It costs us 200,000 pounds, so we're 2 million. So our net gain, so our pink number minus our yellow number, would be 0.75 million pounds. So this is positive to go ahead with. Equally, let's have a look at F. F, again, there's only one outcome from this decision. It doesn't cost us anything and would actually reap us a half a million pound reward. So actually, the net gain, therefore, is half a million to take away nothing will give us a net gain of half a million pounds. Now comparing these two options, you can actually see that the net gain from G is a quarter of a million pounds higher than the net gain of F. So we'd probably go for that. Now I've got to mention previously that we'd show the fact we'd discount F as being the option. Remember, at Square we have the option to make a decision by putting a line through F, and you can see that there, the discount that if we were making that decision, that's not the most financially beneficial for us. So going back to our overall decision tree, we're now in a position where we've got quite a lot of information in there and we've certainly calculated the first two decisions that were over on the right hand side of our decision tree. And we can see that these again were decisions to make, we would choose, we would not do F if we were on the lower decision, we would go for G instead. And on that first decision we made at the top, we'd probably better to go for E, which is financially worth 1.9 million, rather than D, which would actually give us the net loss. So we cross those off. Now at this point, if they were the beginning of our decision tree, they would be net gains. However, they're actually going to form part of our final part of the decision tree, our initial decision, over on the left-hand side. So I'm actually now going to transfer those back to green numbers, if you like, what actually their expected value would be for us as outcomes if those were actually decisions that we were taking. 
I've also, just to simplify, just greyed out the other data at this stage. We wouldn't ignore it, but just to make the screen look slightly less cluttered for you so you can follow what's happening on your screens. So now we're back to our first decision. Do we go for A, B or C? A costs us half a million, B 1.2 million, and C is the always given do nothing, which is pretty much always an option. No cost, no outcome, zero. We always leave that in there because if option A and B end up having a negative outcome, a net loss, we may as well do nothing, C, certainly financially. So now we're going to break A, B and C down as separate calculations again, again using that colour code we've used before. So if we start with A, we're going to look at obviously our two possible outcomes, success is probability of 0 0.6, therefore failure if we can interpret it as 0 0.4, and the value of success 3 million, the value of failure 1.9 million. So again using exactly the same maths we used before, we're going to add together the combined weighted outcomes we have there. So 0 0.6 probability of 3 million plus 0 0.4 probability of 1.9 million would give us a net outcome again if we played this constantly, this is what would be the average, of 2.56 million pounds. Our second step is therefore the net gain. Uh, it would cost us half a million to do A, so therefore 2.56 million pound extra revenue, take away that half a million pounds of cost to do that, gives us a net gain of 2.06 million pounds. So A is positive, it's certainly looking better than C at the moment, but let's have a look at B. For option B, we have two possible outcomes. Uh, the lower outcome we have here is success, which would be a 0.3 probability of making 0.3 million pounds. And we also have the 0.7 probability of that earlier decision we've calculated, which would be worth 0.75 million pounds. So let's again look at those figures. So this time, step one, the expected value, therefore, of option B will be 0.7 probability of making 0.75 million pounds, plus 0.3 probability of making 0.3 million pounds, which will give us that weighted average expected value of 0.615 million pounds. Step two then to have a look at the net gain, so that 0.615 million pounds, there is unfortunately a cost of 1.2 million, it's a very very small revenue increase, but unfortunately for a much larger cost, so our net gain would be 0.615 million, take away the initial cost of 1.2 million, leave us with a net loss of 0.585 million shown in brackets here. So finally C, as I said there's no net gain there, there's no cost, there's no income, and you can see we now have three options which dictates option A being the most beneficial. A has a net gain, if we're going to take that decision, of £2.06 million. B has a net loss of 585000 0.585 million. And C clearly has no net gain at all, it's, it's the status quo. So that's what it looks like in black and white. Now just to explain what's happening here, I just want to point out the process of how we'd sequentially go through this. So starting on the left hand side now, we're making this initial decision. Now the decision here is should we go for A, B or C? And we can see that, that from net gain alone that A is actually the best option. So we'd go up to option A. Now there's a couple of outcomes here. If we have success, that's great, that's worth two point five six million pounds. On average it could be up to three million pounds. If however we don't, we would come down to the second decision. Now, at this point we have the choice of D or E. As we've already seen, D is financially not a good idea, E is so our decision would be then to take E. And actually a compound decision tree could then have further decisions emanating from here as well. So hopefully that's been useful. That's how you work through our decision tree.